It is Wednesday. JMO is back in the building for round two of his auditions. Last week was video number one for me. For those of you who gave positive feedback, thank you so much. You're why I am here again. For those of you who hated me and pressed the dislike button because you wanted to get rid of me, here's your second chance to get rid of me again. Or maybe here's my second chance to change your mind and make you want me to stay. We will see. But enough of the me talk. Let's talk about what you want to hear. I am going to discuss the six most over priced players in fantasy football the dudes that are reaching in your pockets and stealing your lunch money because you keep drafting them they are pulling out the benjamins from your bank account as we speak they are robbing you they are stealing from you and it is my job to stop you from letting that happen anymore but i need you to stick with me in this video because i'm telling you right now you are going to be shocked shocked at some of the names i say but you need to stick with me and there's going to be some ugly truths that comes with the shock part. You are going to hear things you don't want to hear, but there are stats, there's logic. There might be a little bit of fairy dust in there to keep your pockets, your bank accounts, your piggy bank sealed tight and locked away and prevent these players from taking anything more they already have. Gut, throw up some Gordon Ramsay highlights because we are about to get cooking. Okay. <laughs> First player up on the board is Arthur Juan Brown Sr. Who? AJ Brown. That's his full name. I don't freaking know why. I probably wouldn't go by Arthur Juan either. Good choice. I'm going for AJ. But oh, AJ Brown, you are overpriced, brother. AJ Brown's going as a wide receiver six, and that is simply too expensive. Last year, everything broke right for AJ Brown. He was the healthiest he's ever been. He had the MVP runner up at quarterback, and he had career highs in targets, receptions, yards and touchdowns aj brown put up 1500 yards and 11 tds last year not to mention he was the third most efficient wide receiver as he averaged 17 yards per reception last year sounds like a lot of things went his way and he still finished as the wide receiver six not a bad performance i'm not knocking aj brown by any means but when you finish as a wide receiver six and you set career highs and everything and now you're being drafted as a wide receiver six you're pretty much being drafted at your ceiling and that's not a price i can give the sign off to i am not writing my signature i'm not typing in my pin to purchase any aj brown shares as long as he's sitting at wide receiver six if he slips in your draft he's in the second round and he starts falling go for it but where he's currently cooking at where he currently is wide receiver six keep on trucking turn the other way do whatever you need shut the phone off close the laptop do not press the draft button when he's at that price next up on the board and i'm telling you right now you are going to be shocked at some of the players on this list i should have said this in the intro and I mean shocked because next up is Mr. Travis Kelsey, who I'm calling Mr. 106 at this point because that's pretty much where he's going in every draft. And I know already you might be like, shut the tab. This kid doesn't know what he's talking about. Who else are we supposed to draft? Is all of a sudden you're going to say Jay Jettis is a bad pick? Maybe. But no, I'm not that delusional. Hear me out on these few guys. There's other good options out there. I'm, I'm all in on Jay Jettis, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, CMC, B. John Robinson. But I'm here to pull out the few strays that should not be mixed into that purebred batch. Travis Kelsey last year was a stud. I think he's still a stud. And I think he's the tight end one of fantasy football this year. I still believe that. But I do not agree with you paying with the sixth overall pick to draft him. Travis Kelsey is going to be 34 years old. And last year, he set career highs in practically everything. Targets, receptions, touchdowns, and the second most yards he's ever had. I don't believe in a 34-year-old tight end to all of a sudden still match or even break those numbers because that's what you're expecting from him when you draft him with six overall. I like him at the end of the first round, middle of the second round, right where he was going last year where he had the ADP of about, I believe, pick 12. That's where I got him a lot of drafts. The very first pick of the second round or the very last pick of the first round. But now he's going pretty much over everyone except a very few select guys, and I cannot pay that price you don't see many players at all match their career highs in back-to-back -back years let alone their 34 and i know the chiefs proved me wrong last year they won the super bowl but travis kelsey is the number one option so who am i to doubt this chief's offense and that's because i'm not i believe the chiefs could do what they did last year but i don't think it's their sustainable game plan i think they want to mix it up i think they don't want to rely on kelsey as strong as they do there's not going to be an alpha wide receiver one in this room Travis Kelsey will still be the number one option, but I do believe they're going to try to spread the ball more through their wide receivers. They got Sky Moore, Kadarius Toney, Rasheed Rice. They invested a second, a third, and a second round pick in each of those guys. They are making efforts to up this wide receiver room. Again, Kelsey's my tight end one. 
He should be your tight end one, but I'm not paying the six overall pick to get the tight end one. Everyone's going to throw around this lingo, positional value, positional advantage. Having a top three or top two wide receiver is much better than having the number one tight end, if you ask me. And that's why I'm not paying the six overall pick. Number three on this list is Mr. Chris Olave. They're not all first rounders, but even in second round, you can overpay. Similar to AJ Brown, I think a lot of things broke right for Chris Olave last year. Again, I know everyone likes to read into progression or growth, and he's going to get better now that he's got Derek Carr. And I agree agree that is possible but that is so baked into his price of wide receiver 12 right now like i said a lot of things went olave's way Michael Thomas played three games last year. There was no real competition in that wide receiver room. It pretty much went Chris Olave and then the wide receiver three in the depth chart. Now it's going to be Michael Thomas in a fully healthy season next to Olave, along with Jawan Johnson developing, along with Rashid Shahid developing. And of course, Alvin Kamara, who's only got a three game suspension, is also going to be eating some targets in that backfield. Olave had a good year last year, 1,046 yards, four tutties. He was 10th in target rate and 15th in target share. But that was practically with no competition if for the most part and he only finished as a wide receiver 25, which is a good performance, but I say only because now he's being drafted at the wide receiver 12 like he's just going to double where he was last year. I could see growth. I could see him go from 1,046 yards to 1,150 and four touchdowns to six, but is 1,150 yards and six touchdowns worth a top 12 pick in fantasy football when he's going ahead of guys like Devontae Smith, T. Higgins, DK Metcalf, Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, Keenan Allen, yada, yada, yada. Not to me, wide receiver 12 is a steep price with Michael Thomas coming back, and I know the Michael Thomas I want to see is gone. He's dead. Prime MT is gone. But some MT is better than no MT. And Olave had to compete with no MT last year. Even this year, the competition is going to be a little bit tighter, a little bit sharper. And Olave didn't strike gold last year without it. Next up on the list is another second round pick, T Higgins, who I just threw in there acting like he was a better pick than Chris Olave. But no, I'm tricking you. T Higgins is too expensive as well. He's going as a wide receiver 14. Here's his finishes the past three years. As a rookie in 20, 2020, he was a wide receiver 28, 2021, wide receiver 24, last year, wide receiver 19. I will give it to him. He's progressed and gotten better every single year as far as his final fantasy football finish. But if you look up his stat line, gut throw it up, they're all relatively the same. About 70 receptions, about 1,000 yards, and about six or seven touchdowns. People act like he could just crush those numbers and make them look silly. I don't think it's that possible. As much as I like T. Higgins, he is still the second best option on that team no matter what because of Jamar Chase being the top five wide receiver and the alpha he is. Is there a scenario where Joe Burrow has that 40, 45, even 50 touchdown season and T. Higgins benefits from that and is getting double digit touchdowns himself? Absolutely, freaking lootly. But that's pretty much assumed and baked into his price at this point, And there is no guarantee it happens. No matter what T. Higgins does, he'll always be the number two. And he's a phenomenal number two. And he's probably better than a two. But in this situation, this year on the Cincinnati Bengals, he's always going to be the number two behind Jamar Chase. All those other guys, they're all the number one option. And even those who are like maybe 1A, 1B, like Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, that's fine. It's 1A, 1B, T. Higgins, dog. But Jamar Chase is the dog, and that's never going to change. So therefore, I can't draft the second best wide receiver on his own team as a top 14 wide receiver. First running back up on the board Mr. Travis Etienne. Now we went from the first round to the second round, and now Etienne is with the ADP of 41.3 is a fourth round pick. So I'm giving you a little bit of a diverse perspective on who's you're paying too much money for. You don't want any of these guys taking your lunch money, no matter the round. And Etienne is one of those guys who's sniffing your pockets. As I said, Travis Etienne is going as the RB14. This one stat and one stat alone should make you rethink him. Doug Peterson, the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars, has been a head coach in the NFL for six seasons. Five with the Eagles, one with Jacksonville last year. During that time, zero, not a single damn running back finished better than RB14. And that's where Travis Etienne is going. And I love Etienne, the player. I think he's got great burst, but he was given the alpha role last year. Yes, James Robinson cooked for about two or three games, but the rest of the way, it was Etienne's backfield and he did great. He was the fourth most efficient running back last year, 5.1 yards per attempt. But even with that said, it was the RB17 and 24th in points per game. Nothing crazy. And now all of a sudden, imagine this year if he's not the fourth most efficient running back across the entire NFL. Doug Peterson rocks at the committee. That's why he's never had a running back finish better than RB14. The Jags are showing this right now in our face. They drafted Tank Bigsby out of Auburn 
with a third round pick. I'm not sure he'll be the goal line back. Probably the role I could see him having and therefore taking away goal line touches from ETN. But regardless of what his role is, there will be involvement at Tank Bigsby. There's always been involvement of a committee under Doug Peterson. He's shown this for six years straight. Don't be stupid and don't pay the price assuming that's all of a sudden going to change. The final one on this list and another running back. We are going back to the first round and here comes another hot take. Austin Eckler. If you've stayed this long, I do not know how because I've said some alpha names. For anyone that has watched me past the point of saying fade AJ Brown and Travis Kelsey, thank you for sticking with me. And I understand I might have just lost you once and for good because I am fading Austin Eckler at the price of RB2. Similar to the Travis Etienne thing, I'm going to throw out a stat that you just simply cannot deny or close your eyes or turn your head away from. For context, Austin Eckler is going as the RB2 and he is 28 years old. Since 2017, since Austin Eckler has came into the league to finish as the RB3 or better, on average, remember, RB3, Eckler's going at the RB2. To be the RB3 or better, you need, on average, 327.2 fantasy points. Also, since 2017, zero running backs at the age of 28 have put up over 300 fantasy points if your name's not Derrick Henry. So for about six seasons straight, zero running backs at Austin Eckler's age has put up over 300 fantasy points. To be the RB3, he needs 327, roughly. and He's being drafted as the RB2. And I understand... It is hard to tell you to fade the RB1 last year. I know that. And I didn't even mention the fact that everything went Eckler's way last year. If you notice a common theme amongst JMO's videos or JMO's logic in this video, if everything absolutely broke right and everything went in this player's way last year or favor, there's a good chance not absolutely everything will go in their favor again. And that also applies to Austin Eckler. But he had a career high in targets and in receptions and in rushing touchdowns. Another common theme, if you notice career highs in everything, expect that player to not replicate it the exact following year. Everything broke right in Eckler's favor, like I said. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams finished a total of four games together. Four. That's probably not going to happen again. Not to mention the new offensive coordinator of Kellen Moore, of which no one knows how he will implement Eckler. And not to mention... Quentin Johnston, the first round wide receiver for the Chargers, also now taking some snaps and some targets away from Austin Eckler. I am not paying the price of RB2 on average draft position 7.2 for Austin Eckler. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all Jamo's got. He's He's got hot takes and that's it because I know those are catching fire. I cannot imagine the heat I would be getting if this was my first video. Even with it being my second, I don't know if it's going to be that much better. I know I'm going to lose so much of that positive traction that I had. But it's what you need to hear, whether you like it, whether you love it, whether you hate it. I am sorry. Before I go, I need one of three things from you. You know the drill. You pick. I don't care which one, but one of three is required from you. Number, option number one, go to bdge.shop and cop yourself some new merch, maybe a hat, maybe some drip, maybe a shirt, whatever. That's option number two, one. Option number two, go to the same exact website, bdge.shop, and cop yourself a brand new fantasy football updated draft guide for $25. But there's a part B option, option two, that's a little bit cheaper. Like I said, draft guide is $25. But if you go to underdogfantasy.com and sign up using code BDGE, and you deposit $10, 10, said 25 earlier, now we're at 10, that's $15 cheaper. You will get this draft guide for free. And if you use that code, your $10 will be doubled. So now you have $20 to play with. I, I like option B a lot better, your call. Option number three amongst them all is free. Don't worry, we need you to like and leave a comment. Option three is free. That's the cheapest by far. So I need to do both of those. Don't just like and exit out. I need a like and a comment. Thank you so much. And thank you, good night. Thank <laughs> you.